Hey guys, welcome to the next Critique the Community. I have Pai Jerza here from SLR Lounge. We are excited to have him here in Puerto Rico. And we're going to be critiquing wedding photography images. Pai, as you probably know, is a world-class wedding photographer. And so we're excited to have him help with that. If you'd like to be part of the next critique, I just asked Pai, what should the next critique be? And it's kind of an inside joke. You'll see coming up soon. But uh, Pai said it should be images that in incorporate birds in some way. So it can be- Into your portrait. Yeah. Oh, oh, so it has to be a portrait. Birds in a portrait. For the sake of the critique, because I don't want there to be three submissions, <laughs> let's just say images with birds in the images, but ideally portraits with birds. So you take a picture of a couple or whatever and there's birds in the background. Or Something portraits like of that. birds. Or, we'll just say birds. 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 You got a picture of a bird, that's the next critique. Go to the link in the description. You can upload it right now. Let's get to this critique. I can't critique. wait to watch that episode. <laughs> I know. It's going to be the worst. <laughs> it's all your fault. Get your iPad. So all right. the way these critiques work, this is the highest rated image in the entire critique rated by the community. We're going to rate these images. Then we will get to see what the community rated them, just to see if we're on the same track with the public, which mm -hmm. is interesting. Um, but the highest rated image won a free F-Stoppers tutorial. Uh, we also give away one random winner. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give away anything to one random winner? Because you have some incredible yeah. wedding photography uh, education. Yeah, so we do um, complete courses where like like complete business training, complete wedding trainings, complete like, so yeah, we design these frameworks. Um, but why don't we do a, we can, we can choose one complete It'd be like 500 bucks basically that, for the winner. So the winner gets one of these complete training systems. Sorry to whoever took the best image in the critique. You just get a crappy F-stoppers tutorial. But a random winner, I'm just gonna let you choose. But I'm sure in your tutorial you teach them how to do the bird whistle and to get them through. <laughs> yeah, we teach that in my, in my tutorial. Okay, uh, are you ready to rate this? Let's do it. So we're gonna go three, two, one, and then we're gonna throw a number. Okay. Three, two, one. What? Two. What? You give it a four? Yeah. I know you're an amazing wedding photographer, but two, like this isn't even good enough to put on your website as is? I probably wouldn't put this in my portfolio. What? Well, there's a, there's a few reasons. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, go first. If you're gonna throw out crazy numbers, you gotta justify. It's a cool spot and a cool location, but the way that everything is composed, um, kind of leaves me wanting a lot more in the image. Number one, the pose, everything that she's doing is, is well, I call it, so there's a, there's a phrase called isopraxism or mirroring, where everything that she's doing is like, like her elbows are doing the same thing, they're kind of bent in, she's standing straight up, and there's no shape or form in the body and everything is very static and it feels posed and I don't, like, I like there to be shape in the body. Like, I like to have a hip kicked. I like to be able to see a curve in the spine and to be able to see, like, you know, all those details. In addition to be able to actually have her look left or look right so we can see some of her profile. And you still be able to get all the back into the dress detail and get something much more interesting without that bar going directly into her head like the way it is right now. Um, so those are my, my main things that I feel like, I don't think there was enough work done here to make the bride look flattering. You're out your damn mind. What? You are out your damn mind. Sure, she could have a hand on a hip. Sure, she could turn. You take those pictures also, and maybe the photographer liked this pose the best. I don't it, under, uh, listen. It I, feels boring. Like, like you have this great thing, and you basically just stuck her right in front of it and shot a squared up composition with her, and I, I'm not saying that you should do rule of thirds because I hate rule of thirds as well, but I'm saying, I don't hate it, but it's just like, it's the first thing that everybody uses, but there's so many more interesting things here that could have happened. Okay. Versus this squared up shot with her just standing straight. I see what you're saying. It's, it's almost like you are putting yourself in this position and, and saying, what would I do in this situation? It just seems strange to, I would think at the very least you would say, this is, certainly a three-star image. It should be in your portfolio, but here's some tips that I would do to make it better. But you're saying like this, the pose is so bad 
that this shouldn't even go in your portfolio. So a two is like needs work. Needs right? work for it. Yeah. Before it hits your portfolio. Yeah. So I wouldn't put this in my portfolio. As is. I mean, I I respect that because you want to have that world class portfolio. <laughs> But no, I'm not that like. That sounds super douchey. No, now. like no, I, that I'm gonna be douchey to you this entire time. That was <laughs> legitimate. I just I don't know. I don't I don't feel like this well, is that like, bad. Sometimes symmetrical works. Okay, so look at the left side column. Like, why is there fabric that's actually covering the right side, and the fabric on the left side is not even covering it? Because it's a and, like, wedding, and you don't have time to, to be like redesigning stuff. You do have stuff. time. You have time to like bring the attention to detail in and to think about your composition. Like, we could have incorporated the veil and had the veil dropping in the lens and creating something more interesting compositionally. There was clearly, if you have enough time to get this shot, there was enough time to go a step further and really dial it in. I think we need to move on. Because right. uh, agree to disagree. We have a lot. We have a lot of images to go through here. Oh wow, that got three and a half stars. Three point six. Three point um, six. Yeah, three point six stars is what the community gave it. Now keep in mind, this is the highest rated image that we're going to see today. So you should be throwing ones and twos the we'll rest give of you the a day. Three. We'll give you a three. No, you're not. Ten. Oh no, you're not. <laughs> You're not allowed to go back now. He's fighting it so hard. I'm not. I'm just show, showing you how wrong you Did are. Did Ken give you like 20 bucks on the side to be like... <laughs> your, your hypocrisy is about to be shown because unless you rate every other image a one or a two, you, which you won't, you're going to see other ones that you like for different reasons. But we'll, I'm trying we'll to go based happens. on what your award like rating system is and based on what I think a portfolio image should be. And that's where I land is like a two. Okay. But... It probably is a three compared to... Nope. No going back. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> next. All right. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Two stars. We two, agree. Yeah. Um, for this one, I feel like the lighting's pretty decent. It is good. But um, I just... Like, this bride and her facial expression and, like, shooting straight down on brides into cleavage and stuff, it's just... It's kind of a cheesy concept to me. Yeah. And I feel like you really have the potential to offend uh, potential brides. I, I, I had brides all the time uh, when I would go and meet with them and I'd have these photographs that I, that I would love. And, and they would sit there with their mothers and go, oh my gosh, look at how fat her arms look in that mm -hmm. photo. And I'm, I'm like, what? I didn't know arms could look fat. Sometimes they'd be like, that dress is hideous. Yeah. And I'd go, I don't know anything about wedding dresses. Yeah, but sure. I'd have to pull it out of my portfolio because it was taking people out of this positive mindset when they would meet with me. And I feel like an image like this, some clients might like, but other ones, including me, I, I do not like wedding images like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge fan either. And <clears throat> it's not so much for me about the fact that it's top down, it's what she's doing with that top down angle. Like, usually if we do a top down shot, it's to kind of like accentuate the dress. So we might put the bride and groom into a pose and have them do a twirl and a dance shot where they're focused on each other, so the camera angle can't even see their faces. It's just about the overall scene, it's right. about like, you know, the dress and how it full flows and pulls open. But to have her, to have this portrait from above where she's just looking up and into the camera, you immediately go back to these kind of tacky, cheesy, you know, 1980s wedding exactly. portraits where yeah. you're like, okay, this kind of just looks odd. I like the, the softness and the quality of the light, but the direction of the light is not, not necessarily the best. The light's actually coming from underneath her face, and you can see it in the catch light of her eye. Yep. So what ends up happening is that you have those shadows under the bags of the eyes that are being cast up instead of like, you know, having a nice light that's coming from, from above kind of down. So it creates a little bit of an unnatural look. Um, the Compositionally, we also cropped in too tight so we don't even see the full dress. The framing on this background doesn't really make sense. There's a lot of things here that kind of don't work. But one thing that could have been done very easily is to shoot this a little bit wider and then to simply have her look down. If you want it to be a dress shot, have her look down towards her flowers and make sure you clean up the hair that's flowing over the shoulders. But just have her look down at the flowers and then make it about the dress and not like this portrait that's, you know, looking up towards, like, it just feels so unnatural. Like, when would you ever do that? Unless your dad's taking your picture and like you're walking down the stairs and your dad's like, hey, honey, look up at me. I want to take a picture. That's kind of what this feels like. I agree. Community gives it 2.56. 
next up. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. 2.5. Really? This Can is your favorite image so far? I like, it's a nice and candid kind of moment. So it tells a, it tells a story and kind of they're playing and they're having fun. I think it's great in that way. I ag I like the concept a lot, mm -hmm. but I feel like this image. I mean, first of all, what's up with the the angle it needs here? Needs to be fixed. And I've taken a lot of what do we call it, Dutch angle yeah. shots yeah, at Dutch weddings, um, and I think they used to be a little more in style. Now, when I go back and look at some of my images that are tilted, I'm like, oh, why would Dude, I do that? Dutch angle's creative, bro. But this this looks like an error. Yeah, and it's, then it's also so wide that it feels like an error. I feel like you could crop in like two hundred percent, and it would be more of an interesting image. And then this, the guy, the guy on the right, kind of pulls me out of the image more. Yeah, you know, like I, I maybe it should be a vertical image and just have the three people. But um, that's my main issue with it. Um, I feel like. I, I kind of like seeing scenes like this a little bit wider, so I, I disagree with you on that side. I, I disagree with you about everything, honestly. How um, dare you? <laughs> How dare you come to my home and you disagree with me on I, live TV? With your general lifestyle, I just disagree. My, my main issue is, like you said, that that guy, he almost feels like he's not part of the party, you know what I mean? Like he's just kind of off and doing his own thing. <laughs> he's like the drunk wedding <laughs> crasher who's like, whoa, and, I got in, guys. Yeah, like. We don't know who that is. He just <laughs> stepped into this wave to enjoy it with us. But then the other thing to me is like, the way that everybody's posed, I really necessarily can't tell who's, I mean, we obviously know the bride is the bride, but the groom looks almost just like the other guy. Um, and they're, like, if, if you had two people in addition to the bride and groom, wouldn't you put one on each side? I mean, you're acting like this was posed. This I'm, is I'm like- I'm positive this was posed. And it was a moment where they were going to get a portrait of them and they were going to walk or do something like that and then the wave came in. So what I assumed was happening here is they were about to do a picture with the bride and groom. The girl in the black is like the wedding planner or something. She's like a friend who's helping. And she was going in to like make sure the dress didn't get destroyed and then all of a sudden like all hell breaks loose. That's what I think is going on. You think... I think it's a wedding party. You think she's the maid of honor and this yeah. other guy is the... the uh, he's the spear fisherman. Man. He's the spear fisherman. He's, he's looking for fish. <laughs> okay. It just doesn't do it for me as like a world class or even like a portfolio journalistic image. We agree. Finally. 2.11. 2. All right. I like this. Do you feel like this is natural light? It looks like it could be actually. The sun rays... Is that real? Or has that been added? It, it looks like it's been added. Like I think the sun is coming more from above, probably outside of the frame, and it looks like that starburst has probably been added to the frame. And the only reason I would say that is you don't see the light <laughs> spilling onto the walls necessarily of the, mm -hmm. of the chapel. Mm -hmm. So I like to call that funny business. Funny business. This photographer has some funny business going on. Does that on change here. your rating of it? Uh, no. No. Okay. I mean, if it, if it, it, if it is obvious, and obviously fake, then yes. But to me, this feels real to me for some it does. reason. Um, well executed. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. I'm four. in between a three and a four on this one. Like I, 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 maybe I should, maybe I should give this a four. Um, why do you like it so much? I mean, as a, <clears throat> you know, you talked about how a, a bride and groom would react when they see like a potential bride group would wreck when they see pictures in your portfolio. Yes. I see, I look at this and from the, the standpoint of a potential client, there's like, they're gonna be pulled into this photograph. The way that the light is kind of leading down it, and I know that most likely the starburst and everything is done in post and a lot of this, is, but it's done very well. So it's executed very well. The light kind of leads into the couple. The couple is right there on the altar. You can see things going on behind them with the father a little bit, the priest. And there's a story being told here which really draws people in and it's very compelling. It's well executed. My only probably dings that I would give it is the flare doesn't really um, help when you start seeing the chromatic kind of issues going on with that flare. It pulls me out a little bit. So I would have nixed that chromatic kind of flare going on at the bottom of the frame and right next to their heads. Um, and also like the, the candlesticks all by themselves in the middle of that black area draw a lot of my attention to them. So it's almost like they don't really add. I, yeah, I'm trying to figure out, maybe if I just, 
The problem is when you crop in and make an image square, it becomes difficult to fit it into an album or a print or something. So, I, but I, I do. I agree with you. I wouldn't want to permanently crop it and give that be the you know have that be the only option. Would you just Photoshop out those candlesticks because there's something going on with the candlesticks that like kind of tie the image together, but you you just like it with blackness over there. I, I would choose that, and the only reason is because they're just so white, like yeah. you. How You're just dare so you, Pi? <laughs> Pi's last name is Pi Yam, but I called him Pi Yam, and he was like, yeah, that's the way white people say it. And I was like, so I said it correctly then, Pi Yam. Yes, you do everything correctly. All right, good. All right, let's move on. Cool. Community gives it right three, three stars, right on the money. So mm. I was right and you were wrong. Okay. You good? Yeah. Three, two, one. Two and a half, three. I'm in between a three and a four here, but oh. when I go back and forth between this image and the last one, if I could have one in my portfolio, I'd probably choose the last one. So you're, you're going with a two and a half, two. You're saying I'm right. I can never say that. <laughs> I can never admit that. Um... <laughs> I feel like this is some great, genuine emotion going on here. I, I would Photoshop out that scar on her back. My eye has 100%. gone to that like a thousand 100%. times. And a bride-to-be would be like, ew, are you going to leave everything in my... Like? <laughs> uh, but I like this image a lot. I like it too. I, I'm so close to saying it's a three in a portfolio image if a few things were changed. And they're not things that like, I don't think you'd be able to control necessarily, a lot of them. One is the way that her head is crooked away makes yeah. it all about her forehead. Yep. Um, and so like, we don't really have her chin and a good profile. I like that he's covering his eyes and stuff. That's cute, kind of a, a good moment. But the other thing too is that there's nothing compositionally around them that makes this crop a good decision. It's almost like, wouldn't this be a much better shot? It would tell the exact same story and up close. I think what we should do when you give away your free course, we should go through this entire thing and then at the end of this, you Pick will one. have seen all the images and you'll... That's you, what I want to do. Okay. Too. Community gives it 2.83. Huh. So, Payam, how have you been enjoying Puerto Rico? It's incredible. Really? Yeah. Lee's... Very accurate that he, he changed my life in many ways. Usually by just like, I see the things that he does and I'm like, I, I gotta take some time to do those things. But um, we, I, I, always, I, wanna... I always yell at you, I'm like, Pi, take the time and do some things. Yeah. And you're like, I gotta work, man. I gotta, I gotta change my business. I've been I listening. Gotta, have you? I've been listening and um, I'm gonna do my best to, to try and figure things out and maybe we'll join you out here at some point. That would be amazing. That so. would be amazing. We've got a uh, competition video that's gonna we're gonna film right after this, where we reveal we've you guys have probably already seen on F Stoppers. Um, we release two images anonymously. This this is for all the marbles. This is to finally prove which website is best. It's, it is, and it's who literally. really who's the best photographer? Period. Because yeah, you are far more successful at wedding photography. But that's only because I've chosen not to do it anymore. <laughs> All right, next up. <clears throat> mm. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Two. <sighs> okay. This is a tough one for me. Because I feel like this has a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this might have a lot of commercial value. Like stock image or something. But this has... Great potential to offend potential brides. And they're going to go like, ooh, she looks goofy. I don't want to look goofy on my day. You're not going to take weird photos of me making faces like that, are you? And so I always tried to go, you know, wedding day images for the most part were timeless, elegant. Like that was the, the goal. And then dancing photos, that's like drunk having fun. Mm -hmm. But portraits during the day of like goofy and stuff, I would take them. I would take them, but yeah. I just don't know if I'd put them in my website. On You'd my give website. them to the clients, but they're they're for the clients. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree with you 100 percent that this should be for the bride. 
like it's for her. Um, but it's so close to being like a, what I would call a world-class photojournalistic moment. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of things going right with it. Like the way that it's edited is beautiful. Like I love the tones. I love, you know, the, the background, the way that it's shot, lit. All of it is, is really working. So the photographer did a lot of really great things here. But what we're missing and that huge key piece that would make this a, a world-class photojournalistic moment is context. There is no understanding from the viewer's perspective of why she's doing what she's doing. If somebody was like handing her a baby, yeah, then it would be then this would be amazing. Yeah, you if you pulled back and you saw what was actually happening in the scene to cause this moment, yep. then it takes away the offense that you're talking about. It takes away everything. When a bride sees that, they think it's hilarious, yeah. and they think you're an incredible photographer for capturing that moment. But without that context, we're left with just what's happening. I agree, and the community also agrees at two point four stars. Next up. What the heck is going on here? <laughs> it's easy. They're just in the middle of the river having drinks. Does it bother you that the table is not quite <laughs> it does level? Bother me. <laughs> it bothers me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but what ready? are you going to do? Like, hey, guys, you're, I know you're in the river, but I need you to really just get that table. You got to get the, the sugar packet and like get it under that, that <laughs> leg. Three, two, one. Two and a half to three. Okay. I kind of agree with you. What I like to say is I'm giving this three stars, but I see a lot of potential with this photographer, and I feel like this should be cycled out of their portfolio as more higher quality images make their way in. I, I agree. Um, I mean, there's a lot of potential in the creativity behind the shot, and, it's, and it is like decently executed. I like the low angle that they took to the water. The water kind of leads up into them. Um, I like that the, the trees are mostly kind of framing the background. Good placement, good editing. The table is the, the thing that's like obvious. For me, like I just have trouble with context in this image, like the story. Like when I see a shot like this, I just go, why? Why why are they in the river? I agree, but aren't you one of these guys that takes the trash the dress sessions where the girls lay in the ocean and get splashed and stuff? Like that makes no sense either. But it's not just I, I is if this is it's not distinctly trash the dress to me. This feels like an engagement shoot or something where they're just having a picnic in the water. Because <laughs> the dress doesn't look like a wedding dress, does it? I mean, it looks kind of wedding-esque. Oh, I don't know. I, I mean, I just feel like anything that's white is a wedding dress to me. But, um, but that's, that's a very subjective thing, though. I, I will say, like, it's very subjective. There might be people that are like, oh, my gosh, that's so creative, so cool. For me, I want that creativity with also a balance of like purpose, and I don't see the purpose in like having them. I feel like the image is too wide, and I feel like cropping in. I love I love the shallow depth of field across the water that leads into the you know yeah. focus plane on them, but I just feel like it's so wide. If I crop in a little bit, I like the image a lot more. All right, let's move on. Community gives it. 2.83. Have you done one of these images yet? I have. These are all the rage, and you're all about that. Uh, I'm all about taking like someone cliche else's, photographs. Someone else's idea and just stealing it and making it your own, and then making tons of money, just buckets of money off someone else's creativity. That's what you're about? Yeah, I'm known for that. Okay. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Three, three, two, two one. I'm, I'm going between a two and a three on this one. I'm at a solid two on this one. You know what my biggest problem with this image is? The guy's posture. That is a big issue. His it feels so, like, I have a slouchy problem, but it just feels so awkward. And then what's, where is his hand? Yeah. Is it in his pocket? It's on her hip, but you can barely see it. Oh. You got two fingers right there on there. That's weird. Yeah, that's really hard to see. Like, what is going on with his lapel? It looks yeah. like he's wearing, like, a winter coat or something. It, if it's a suit jacket, it's, like, three sizes too big for him. Like, that's not the... Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Here's my personal... My personal... Lay it out, Pi! On, on, okay, so... Things are cliche for a reason, right? The double exposure shot is cliche because... Everybody likes it. But just because it's cliche doesn't mean it's necessarily bad, in my opinion. Sure. So I'm not one of those photographers who's like, oh, like, remember the, when there was like a photographer that did like a, 
a stomping shot, like the groom is stomping on the on the bride or something like that, or the bride is stepping on the. Oh, remember yeah. that like yeah. force com- force perspective kind yeah. of shot. And I had a bride like I want to do that shot, and I'm not the photographer to go crush their dreams and be like, oh, that's so cliche though. Like, that's below me. Yeah, so I'll I'll be like, you know what, I I love that. Let's do it. Let's let's put our spin on it. And so I remember doing this, and I I said, why don't we do it? I'm gonna do it. Let's do it my way. Where. You guys, the bride and the groom, are going to step on your entire wedding party. And they had 12 people. And we had the, the groom on the one side and the bride on the other side. And we did it. And it turned out really fun and cool. And it went up online. And it was one of our most liked images on Instagram and most shared and, like, everything. Yeah. And it's to say that these shots are cliche because they're generally pleasing. And it's not a bad thing to be creating pleasing images. But this is... I, I applaud the photographer for trying it. But it's done poorly in the way that... The texture, when you're doing a double exposure, you generally want the texture to be most thick in the areas of the face. And let's skip the whole pose and things. You already, you already pointed out the pose and all that kind of stuff is off. But you generally want that texture to be most thick in the face and to drop off as it goes down towards the end of the frame where their bodies are. So their bodies are essentially like kind of going and, and fading out yeah. while their faces are. And instead what we have here is like their his brain is a tree and, and you know, you have this weird texture going over the face and over the back and her skin and it just doesn't make sense and it doesn't feel quite right. I agree, community 2.46. All right, you ready? I am. Three, two, one. One and a half to two. This is your least favorite image so far? You said a one is a snapshot, yeah. and this is the one that feels most like a snapshot. It does, but it certainly captured a great moment. It is a good moment. So maybe for that, it's more along the two lines. Yeah. Composition's weird. The way it's cropping out this dude's hands is very strange. I feel like we need to zoom in a lot, or we need to yeah. uh, tilt the camera down a little bit, or maybe lower the camera and shoot up at them. I don't know, but yes, it feels... The fact that their heads are like right in the middle of the frame is the most stereotypical snapshot yeah. style image. That's what everyone who doesn't know what they're doing would do. Um, but That's that same hip crop that we talked about earlier. Oh yeah, hip crop. Um, but you know, I love what's going on. I love her facial expression, but the lighting and the background and the wide angle shot and the deep depth of field, it just kind of makes it feel kind of cheap. Yep, I agree. Community gives it. 2.02 stars. One of my biggest, I don't know if you could call it a regret, but I always wanted to shoot an elaborate Indian wedding, and I never did. Or fun. Those are honestly my favorite. Really? Shoot. I could see them being fun, but I could also see it being really stressful. If you're working for days after days after days, and it's like the parties never end. They're super high pressure, very long. But yeah, like just so much, like from a from an artistic standpoint, there's just so much to shoot. Yeah. Three, two, one. Two. Okay, you think this belongs in your portfolio, why? There are wedding clients in a, in a range of different budgets. Yeah. Okay, so only the top 1% of 1% can afford to hire Leninger as a wedding. So like you're off the table for the majority of people. Um, so for that reason, I don't think you have to have world-class images in your portfolio as a wedding photographer to make a living. Okay. I would say the vast majority of wedding photographers do not have very good images, and a lot of them do fine because you can you can find uh, clients that have smaller budgets, and you know they or maybe they just don't appreciate ultra high-end wedding photography or whatever. You know, there's some problems with this, like the highlights are blown. Mm -hmm. You know, there seems to be something yellow on her chin that could probably be taken out. Like, there's little details like that. There's little blemishes and stuff on her clothes that could be retouched. But for the sake of, like, a wedding photographer, maybe they're just getting started. Or maybe, you know, they're they're just shooting weddings for 2000 bucks or whatever. I feel like this is, this is good. To me, the expectation for the wedding photographer is being increased year by year. That's true. Um, from the client's perspective. Because they are seeing what these people are doing. The ones that are, you know, at a higher level and they are putting in the time and the and the posing and they're they're just learning how to do it quickly. And so I feel like if you keep taking the those images, it puts you in trouble with the clients who might see something and go, I was expecting more. 
I was expecting you to set up something. And for this, I can tell that the photographer did do a few things to set things up. So there are things being done already, and my thought is like when, when any details come into play, I like to incorporate a little bit of the pose into those shots. This looks like a detail shot where they're just standing straight up, and you just went in close and took a detail of the necklace, which it works, but like the hands could be kind of leading up to the necklace. We could show a little bit more of the chin and the nose, and you can actually crop at the bridge of the nose with her looking kind of off and down to the side. So we can actually get context for who she is, and, and, and you don't have to include all of her face, but this is cropped right below her bottom lip, which feels odd to me. Um, and it's also not posed in the chin in a way that's flattering, so you kind of have that not so well-defined jawline. And so all those things kind of make me go, this could be a portfolio image if we did those things, but it's, we didn't. Like, I want to get the wedding photographer to that next place where they can go into a scene, and despite the fact that they might only have a minute, they can still set it up, pose it, do everything right, and have almost a commercial quality image in a fraction of the time. I mean, I can't argue with anything you're saying. I, I feel like Pi just has so much more of a discerning eye than I do, especially when it comes to wedding photography. I, uh, you know, this is probably to my own detriment, but I just always kind of said, I, I I just want to kind of capture what the day is. I don't want to be too posy. I don't want to intrude too much. I don't want to sure. be the spotlight myself. I'd rather just jump in, take a quick shot of the necklace, and move out. I don't want to be moving and posing and everything. But it certainly shows in my work compared to yours where every image, every detail is considered. Well, there's, I should, there's a complete genre of clientele that want exactly what you just described. Photojournalism, minimal involvement, you know, shoot what you're seeing, like that kind of stuff. Most of our clients aren't that. And it's probably also because of what we're showing, right? So we're showing images that are usually pretty polished. And yeah. so. The community agrees with you, 2.31. Goodness, you guys are rough. Okay. Three, two, one. Thank you. Yeah, I'm in between a one and a two on this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm at a full snapshot on this one. The reason why I feel a little uncomfortable giving it a one is because uh, it looks like bounce flash was used, so like some sort of technical knowledge was used on this image, but um, you know, the composition is crazy, the way that you're cropping off the girls, the back of her hair, there's these weird stairs behind, not the most attractive clients, you know, you got weird teeth going on, like all of these things, is this what's going to sell potential clients in the future? Is this what's going to get somebody who's on the fence between you and the next girl or guy photographer and go, you know what, because I see this image in their portfolio, like I, I'm going with this photographer. I don't think so. This is a very unflattering shot. And on top of that, like, there, there could have been a lot of things that were done to make it more flattering, but the crop and the composition, like every rule is broken here where the skin is exiting the frame, the corner is cropped at the hips, you know, everything is going on and it makes her look bigger than she is. I like that it looks like maybe they were trying to think of using this rail as a leading line that's like dropping into them, but it's not working and the background is like this weird green tone. It would have honestly looked better as a black and white. So if it were black and white and it had good expressions, I'd say two. But there's so many ways that you could have gotten a candid portrait of these two and create a flattering image for both of them. And I do think that that would have sold potential clients. So to show a broad range of people and race and size and, and everything is a beautiful thing, but you want the bride to see that and go, you know what, like we, both of us have more of a full figure than, than most people do, but I see like you made them look so beautiful and happy and in love, that's what we want. Community gives it 1.4. Man, I hate that windshield wiper. <laughs> right over his mouth? Yeah, that's such a bummer, because this is it a is. really cool image. <sighs> that kills me. Okay, <laughs> yes. Three, two, one. Because of the windshield wiper. Yeah, but it's not just that. I mean, I want, I want to have a little bit more detail in the background as well. I mean, I, I feel like... Um, I do too. You know, the, the rain 
on the windshield is kind of interesting. It's, it's, I think it adds a little bit of uh, something to it. I think maybe the headlights on the car should be on. Mm -hmm. I think there Make should be sense. something in the background, like even if it's super dark trees in a dark, dark, dark sky, something to pull this entire image together, but there's so much potential. If I had the clarity of their faces, I'd say it's already portfolio. Like, you, you can put that in your portfolio. I, I love negative space shots, but usually if you're gonna shoot a negative space shots, there are a lot of negative space, right? This doesn't have that. This just has like some black in the background, and that's what makes me feel like there should be some texture or detail or something going on in that background, yeah. because it's not so far back that it's a negative space shot. It's up kind of closer. So I, I want the same thing. I want a little more detail there. Yeah. Community. It's a good shot. 3.06, so they yeah. liked it a little more than us. Interesting, interesting. So Pi, last night I brought you to jujitsu class. That was so much fun. And uh, I have injured a rib. I don't know if I broke something or tore something, but I've been out for weeks and I was hoping that I could drill last yeah. night. I couldn't do anything. Yeah, you were out. So I just had to sit off and my coach was like, if you're not gonna do anything, get off the mat, Lee. <laughs> So I just got to sit back and watch you, and you did a few drills for the first hour, yeah. and then it was time to spar, and you, you went after it. You were doing good. It was fun, dude. Before we went to class, I showed you a few moves. I was like, this is how you're going to win today. And you, you were close. You were catching people in these Americanas, but you just didn't quite know how to finish it. So Lee was teaching me, you're a really good coach, first of all. So like for about, I don't know, like 45 minutes before the class, he was teaching me, we're on the floor, in his living room, on a carpet, and uh, some weird positions. I've never been that close to you before in my entire yeah, life. Yeah, that's was, part of PJJ. It's honestly why I came out to Puerto Rico. Okay. That, that like made my trip. <laughs> so, and then like, yeah, we're in the class, and I would be in these positions, and I'd be in someone's full guard, and be like, okay, Lee taught me to put my knee behind the butt, arch my back, pull out, and, and, and like everything worked. And I was able to get people in these submissions, and then I would forget, like, what was the, what was the last step? <laughs> and I'd be sitting there on the floor, and I have a person like completely. Well, you, I was trying to do a Gamora, but I had them like in that place, and you were saying it was an Americana instead of it, because the way I was pulling. It was Americana, Gamora. Yeah. So I was pulling, and I and like I was like, I can't get them to submit because I was just a little bit off. But I'm trying to. I want to get out there tonight. If if if, if we go tonight, so Pi rolled for two rounds of five minutes. Um, so 10 minutes of rolling, you were drenched in sweat. <laughs> Tonight, though, is a straight hour of rolling. That's and I, I want to do it so bad, but like my rib is killing me. I can't, I can't do anything. But I will bring you back and I will just, I'll record video. Maybe I can put some video in yeah. this, uh, in this Watch critique. me lose and get destroyed. <laughs> Three seconds. Three seconds. Ah! <laughs> and the clock <laughs> I can't believe it, dude. There was zero seconds left. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is a cool shot. Look at this. There are better images in here, man. You, you make, That's always the you way it works. You freaked me out, and then I'm, got me second guessing. But what is that rogue? There's, why is there just a little bit of water behind them? That's the weird thing to me. Okay. I'm going to give them a rating based on making a few changes. Easy changes. Okay. Well, then I'm going to do the same then. Ready? <laughs> Three, two, one. Three and a half. So, the change is just crop in and make this a vertical image and you can't see that there's only water right behind them and then it's like an amazing vertical image. You're not seeing the weird tanker ships on the left side. That would work totally well. Um, I was gonna say you could take this shot and just Photoshop, I mean content aware patch will just nix that guy right out of there. Um, content where Phil, I mean. But yeah, the, the thing that's odd to me about this, and, and here's the problem. I know why the water directly behind them is lit and we don't see anything else lit. It might be raining, it might not be, it might be splashes, I don't know what it is. But the, the, the water off to the right side is distracting because it's like, why do we see water lit up to the right side of the frame but nothing on the left side of the frame? Then you have this big amount of water directly behind them which is lit up, and the reason why it doesn't feel quite right is because the flashes place so close to the couple. So you see the reflection on the water, the flash is maybe like a foot or two behind them. If you're gonna put them in there, what I would have done is brought them out of the water a little bit more and place the flash a little bit further as, as much as possible and kind of create more distance between the couple and the flash. 
and potentially even using two flashes, and you could have lit up a lot more of the rain. So it looked like if this was water behind them, a lot more of it would have lit up because the light would have opened up and hit more of it. But without that, it almost feels like, I'm, I'm like wondering if this is Photoshopped. Like, was it Photoshopped? Was it dropped in? Um, it just feels like it's a little bit off. But I love their expressions. I love the pose. Um, you know, the post-production is fantastic. Take the HSL and drop a little bit of the blues because you have so much blues creeping into the dress and the shirt that it's, it's a little bit pulling me out of the image and just seeing the blues. Um, but I think with just removing the ship, you'd at least have a portfolio image. And with those corrections, you can take it up further. Community, 2.76. Oh, they're harsh. Ouch. They're super harsh. Now this, it's been a while since I've looked at your pictures, but this kind of seems like something that you would do. Three, two, one. Two and a half to three. You're wrong, Pi. You are wrong. This image is good enough to be a commercial wedding image. And it's, it's um, like okay. she, she looks like a commercial model, which just kind of opens up the door. She, she also has an ambiguous race, which is like perfect for advertising because she could just be anything. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, she could be. And um, it's simple enough, the, the dress and the hair and the makeup, it's timeless enough that this image could just be used for a number of different things. And then if this was truly taken on a wedding day with a real bride, that's amazing in my opinion. Okay. I think it's portfolio worthy right now. I guess there's a couple things that bug me. Okay. Um, again, the weird crop. Like, I, I don't, I, I just don't like cropping at the, at that hip point. But I also don't see like the way that she's standing and the way that this pose is well, being Well, hold on. Done. Isn't this what you said they should be doing? Because before they were cropping at the hip so you'd see the hourglass coming out. Here they cropped above the hip. This is above, but it, I, I personally don't like it the way that it, it's barely above the hip. The pose and the expression, it's not, it's not selling me on it. it. It sells me on the photographer told her to do this. If, if she were to be doing this like in the moment, you know, you would, you would have the bride kind of like playing with the dress, right? And it would be a very soft kind of movement where the hand is out in a little bit and there's maybe some swing to the hip while she's playing and kind of looking out of the dress. So you'd be kind of looking down and like, you know, towards the side. Mm. Whereas like right now, it's literally like she's just holding this thing up and just staring at it. So you're while I- right, Pi, I hate to admit it. I love the light, right. I love what you're doing with it, I love the post-production, the tones, everything is so good. And I would agree 100% with you that it's a commercial image if the pose and the expression sold me, and it doesn't. Hmm. Yeah, now that you say that, it does feel, the pose feels a little awkward, her staring at her fingertips feels a little bit awkward. You're right, you're right. 3.39. You ready? Oh, I hate to do this. Do one. Two. I feel like this bride is beautiful. The styling is beautiful. Like the pose, I'm not really into the fashion wedding mm -hmm. posing stuff, but like she looks good. The lighting looks good to me. But it's just the composition and the location is so strange. Again, I'm just thinking about potential brides that come to your website and see this sort of thing and this does not feel like timeless. I'm willing to take out a loan for this photography because I want my grandkids to be able to see this. Like that's the vibe I want when I see wedding photos and this is not that to me. Yeah. There, I, I like a lot of things about this. The composition is interesting to me. Like if you minus the bride out of it, take the bride out of it, the composition is actually pretty interesting in the way that we see the buildings and everything. And I like the bottom up angle and everything. Now we add the bride. I like these fashion kind of poses. I think they're really cool. I, I do feel like from here, the way that the camera's positioned bottom up with her leaning away from the camera um, isn't doing any justice for her the, the, her torso. You know, like it's like almost like getting smaller as it goes away from the frame. So I would have shifted her hip and had her lean into the camera a little more. But my main issue is that you lit the shot, but you didn't light her to separate her from the background. So here we have a dramatic pose, a dramatic image, a dramatic composition. You're actually adding light, and yet it's shot so white and so bright that she just kind of blends into everything else. She's lost in the frame. On top of that, she's looking directly out of the frame from the corner of the image. She's in the corner of the image and she's looking out of the frame 
which leads me directly to that guy's sword that's like pointing right towards her face. I and know. I wonder like, why are we it's there? It's weird. And the way he's holding it, it's weird. It's really odd. <laughs> so a lot of that could have been fixed by flipping her around to the other side and then actually darkening down your frame. And if you're gonna shoot a dramatic shot with lighting, actually make it dramatic by dropping the exposure two to three stops for the ambient light and kicking up your light so you actually have something really dynamic and where she's separated from the background. And the background just becomes a background as opposed to like something so bright. I agree. Community, 2.14. What the? Hmm. I, I could see this working in some super artistic film shooting wedding photographer's portfolio, you know? And it's like, they're so artistic that they that don't, don't have don't to capture the faces. So artistic, we don't even know what's happening. Yeah. There's aspects to this I like. It's almost got like a fine art, painterly feel. Like I could purchase a print of this and hang it in my house and it's not of me. You know what I mean? It, yeah, this it is going beyond wedding photography. I agree. But we have to rate it as wedding photography. Yep. So should it be in your portfolio? Let's go. Three, two, one. Really? I can't. I can definitely not give this a, a one just because I feel I feel like there's something artistic going on here. There is something artistic going on, but it just doesn't feel intentional. Like, hmm. it does feel <coughs> intentional to me. It, this feels like a mistake. It, it was a happy mistake to me. I would agree with you 100% if they cropped it down and they submitted this. Interesting. And now you literally have an entire story. This is a wedding day story just out in action in the middle of somewhere. It's an interesting idea. And then from that, I would say, hey, that could be like a, that, to me, that's a three. Mm -hmm. Like that could go in your portfolio as a, a film. But right here, this is the happy mistake where it's currently cropped because everything above their dress and everything is white. Like you don't even see anything. Their faces are completely like gone and, and there's no detail and there's no, there's no nothing up there. So that's why, to me, it gets a one. But it, with that crop, ex existing as it is, I would say that's a portfolio image, if that's your look of like that fine art kind of you know, thing. Community gives it 1.65. Okay, I'm good on this one. Three, two, one. Three Four stars, points. we agree. Solid image. I feel like this is an image that needs to be in all wedding photographers' portfolios. For sure, it's, it's nice. Um, we have context for where it is, good story. I love the black and white. I would have said just to her, like, you know, I want you to really fall into this moment. Like, be happy, enjoy this moment, forget I'm here for a second. Because her expression is just slightly less excited and... It's a little goofy. He yeah. looks genuinely happy He's genuinely and warm. He's into it. And she looks a little goofy. And, and this is why I hesitated and almost gave this two stars, is because I feel like this is a really beautiful girl with not the most beautiful expression and brides, potential brides, pick up on these details way more than we do, especially as men. Yeah. But as the photographer, we're looking at things like, oh, look at this natural light coming in the car. Oh, it's so great that they're, it's not just some boring, normal car. They're in like a coach thing. It's great. I've been waiting for an image like this. This is what I needed in my portfolio. But brides are going to go, man, look at her buck teeth. Or some yeah. weird thing that you don't even notice and if that if you meet with clients and they start seeing the same thing again and again you got to pull that image out for sure and what I would say here is is like for me this would have quickly went to a four um, potentially even a, a five had her expression really sold it and there's an easy fix here so if you find that she's not you know giving you the expression that you you want First, take her distractions away. She's holding the bouquet up with her left hand. That takes energy and it takes thought. That like, is I don't know strange. why she's doing that. So say, why don't you just relax the bouquet down? And I really want you to get in the moment. And if she doesn't get in the moment and she can't quite do that, then go, look, I want you to smile at his goofy grin right now. Look at that face right now. And if she turns and just looks towards him, then she's immediately gonna be sold and that smile's gonna change. You're also gonna fix the whole teeth issue because now you have the teeth at an angle. So you're not gonna see spaces in the teeth and now she's wrapped into him as he's wrapped into what he's doing and you have a perfect triangle with their eyes. So she leads into him, he leads into the glass, the glass is right below her face, and you have this like little loop that uh, a viewer would get stuck into. Community, 2.78. Oh, this is a cool dress. Very edgy, I like it. Oh, I didn't even notice. You can like see her whole body <laughs> through the dress. Yeah. That's wild. 
That's really wild. It's very avant-garde. So hmm. this is tough. This is a tough tune. Yeah. Three, two, one. I'm, I'm a in two. between a two and a three. I want to love this. I want to love this because I feel like the couple looks cool. The color grade you have going on here is cool. Fix the horizon line like that. That's the easiest, you know, just twist the image a little bit. There is so much going right, though, like you said, like the colors and the, I, I love the colors. Now, what do you <coughs> think about putting brides with wacky dresses like this in your portfolio? Is this acceptable for your business or is this too weird and you might offend people? No, to me, this is exactly what I like. Like our clients very much have a fashion kind of a look to the way that they want to dress. So they want to dress very couture, like a lot of their, so doing something styled like this, this potentially could be a style shoot or an actual client, but they like this kind of stuff. Seeing something different, seeing something unique, um, for sure. It, it, it depends on whether you want it to be, I wouldn't want this to be my leading image on my website, but in the portfolio as like, you know, like bridal fashion or something like that, that would make complete sense. Oh, well that, see, that's a really good idea because then that opens the door. If you're, you're like, I know this is weird and wacky. That's yeah, why it's in. That's this why it's in a different category. Yeah. So you don't use it like as that front line. Okay. Like a Jewish mother seeing this would be like, what the f? Like yeah. I'm not hiring this person. Yeah. And that's why you don't leave it there. You you kind of place it correctly. But for me, the the issues with the shot is um, one: be super careful with a dress like this. When you have her leaning back like that, it's actually going to push the belly out. Um, and it almost creates a fold, and I can see it right there in her skin, where like it creates a fold where there's a shadow, and you can see almost that she has a belly. Yeah. Um, that's something that a bride is going to pick up on so dang quickly. In addition to her arm looking so wide, because it's tucked into her like her armpit quite a bit. So you want to let the arm relax and fall behind her a little bit, so it it doesn't widen out the the shoulder and the arm. The other stuff for me is just like there's just so much background here that I don't like. Like, lakes and rivers are great, but not when they're filled with bubbles. You know, like, the bubbles back there just look nasty and they look distracting. <laughs> There's a weird, odd tree to the left side of the frame that doesn't add anything to it. So, I almost feel like a low composition where you frame those things out or focus on this waterfall. Like, why isn't the waterfall part of the image, you know? There had to be something more interesting there to shoot against versus what you're shooting against. On top of that, when you have a backlit subject with light hair, be sure all the hair goes behind the head. Do you see like the little beard that she's got coming out of her neck right here because mm -hmm. it's lit up and backlit? So you gotta just make sure that the hair is pulled back. Good critiquing, man. Community gives it 2.74. I haven't seen an image that looks like this in a long time. Uh, what, before we rate this, what type of camera and flash took this? It's definitely an on-camera flash. Like a speed light or I no, I think it's a, a flash right I next. I think it's built into the camera. Yeah, that's yeah. what it looks like to me, too. <coughs> Three, two, one. I hate to do it. I hate to do it, but we get we both give it one. I mean, dude, it's got it's got the red eye effect. I hadn't seen red eye in 15 years. It has red eye. I didn't even know that was a thing anymore. Lightroom does have that tool. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, there's just some wacky stuff going on here. This is what always freaks me out when I see photographs that are bad, but yet there's wacky Photoshop going on. And I'm like, how do they know how to do this Photoshop, but they don't know how to do the red eye and they don't know how to do flash photography and they don't know how to do natural light. They're fully cut and pasted onto this background. Yes. What is happening? Like, if you look right in between them, there's a sharp piece of wood. Is that the door back there? No, so what I think they did was they, they probably brightened up the entire background, and then it's probably the same background, but they didn't brighten up the part between their faces. No, but they also blurred it. It could be, yeah. It looks like they cut them out, brightened everything, but they left that part. Like, their mask didn't include that part. Yeah. They worked on everything else, yes. and then, like, you know. They were like, yeah, that part in the middle and the part that's behind her veil, we're, we're going to yeah. leave that. Yeah. And so I just wonder, one, how did these photographers learn to do this in Photoshop? But then if you're going to go through this weird process of trying to make this sh fake shallow depth of field look, why not get all the door? Why not go by the groom's face and get the rest? It's really For weird. Sure. So Patrick, Patrick is complaining that by definition, it can't be one star. It can't be a snapshot because Photoshop has been done to the image. But 
I don't know that I... I disagree with that definition, 100%. <laughs> But this, this is genuinely, like, I, I feel like it's a person that's standing next to what's going on, and they're taking that picture, and then they're going and working on it, which is cool, like, um, you know, like, they're, they're testing things out and getting critique. So, one, you would say, yeah, don't use that direct flash like that. Brighten up, like, it would have just been better as a bright natural light image, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Um, and then the Photoshopping of the background. Community agrees. 1.5 stars. And we are to the final image. The bride and groom are on fire mm-hmm. in a burning church. They've decided that they can't escape, but they're going to have one final moment together. That's amazing. You got all of that just from... There's a story to be told here, Pa. <laughs> this is definitely that atmosphere aerosol, right, being used in the... I, I guess so. I guess so. You know, the funny thing is, I don't, I don't think I would mind it, but it really freaks me out that it's in front of his face so much. Yeah. He looks like uh, Two-Face, you know? He yeah. got, like, burned in the the chemical fire. <laughs> I can and, see that. And so... It's, uh, it's putting a weird texture over his skin that, like, yeah, it makes it look... But I feel like this is such a beautiful image otherwise. It's like I want to see this image without the smoke. Oh, we haven't even given this a rating yet. Yeah, okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Two and a half to three. I'm still going three. Like I feel like, I feel like there's so much that's still beautiful about this. I love the composition. The bride particularly looks great. She looks really good. Her profile looks really pretty, and then you have all those flyaways in her hair that can sometimes ruin an image, but it it just makes it look like she's glowing in this yeah. shot. I love it. The color, you know, a lot of times I see these images that are just all red or yellow and. I don't like it. I really like it in this image. Yeah. So some of the things that I would critique about it that I don't quite understand. Uh, Creatively, number one, if you're going to use atmosphere aerosol, spray it and give it about 20 seconds to dissipate so you're not getting texture of smoke. That way it's just an actual, like, it's just an actual, because all you want is atmosphere to to kind of bring that mood into the shot. So we're shooting too close to when it was actually sprayed in. Two there seemed to be this perfect opportunity to frame them right in this dead space between the stained glass windows. Because for me, if you're gonna put them on the left side and then kind of crop in like this, that would have made a ton of sense. And maybe even shooting it vertical or cropping in so that it's really about them and the detail there. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, pose is just fantastic. Like, if we had picked a composition that were better for this shot, I mean, I'd be looking at a four or a five. if you made those changes via crop here, we're looking at a solid three as is. Community gives it a solid three exactly. Ah. And that wraps up this critique. Now it is time for you, Pi, to go is back through and choose the winner of your tutorial. I am picking this person, whoever shot this. Really? Yep. Interesting. Because I feel like there is so much creatively that can be done here, and I love the fact that Arlo is looking for moments and trying to create these moments, and it looks like he's already trying to direct and kind of bring that out of a scene. Was there one that you would have picked? Well, I feel like you're so advanced. I mean, the critiques that you're giving are so specific. You see details that I would never see if I looked at an image for an hour. Um, So I feel like this photographer is not yet to the level where they can even comprehend the stuff that you're talking about. That makes sense, but from the way that our education works, because we train all of our associates in studio, and most of them are photographers. So the way that all of our courses work is they're ground up. So like we're talking through the posing, the why, the... This is a funny thing. I don't know if I ever told you this, but I'm not like very creative, and I don't find myself to be artistic. My high school art teacher, did I ever tell you the story about my high school art? No. He told me to quit. He goes, you should quit because you just aren't good at this. You're not good enough. Wow. The thing was that I never understood art and creativity until I could put rules around it. And so that's what... You're like a scientist. No, I just like frameworks. I like systems and frameworks. And so that's what I've built a career off of creating frameworks that other people use. So no matter where you're starting from, there's a framework to get from knowing nothing up until this, up until this, up until this. Mm. So he'll be fine. Great, great. 
Well, thank you guys for watching. This might be a world record length. We're, we're up to an hour and 30 minutes. We're gonna edit it a little bit, but uh, this is a long was critique. Long critique. Pi was like, people sit through all of these? And I was like, yeah, we have some crazy critique fans. Yeah. And every time we try to make them a little shorter, they're like, why did you shorten it? Don't do 10 images. You're lazy. More. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know. But we'll see you next time. If you have photos of birds, make sure that you uh, go to the link in the description, upload those bird files, and we will be <laughs> filming the worst critique of all time, thanks to Pi. It's next gonna be the week. most entertaining, though, Maybe. of all time. Maybe.